Okay, so it's hard for me to kind of figure out where to start telling you my story. So let me just say this. My family is from Punta del Agua, Argentina. And for as long as I can remember, my family has been in the business of harvesting sunflowers. I remember being a kid playing out in the fields full of sunflowers, being chased by bees and stung left and right. And it was in these very same fields where my brother and I had our dog man encounter. But however, before I get to that, let me just explain to you a little bit about the process of growing sunflowers. It's important that I share this with you so you understand some of the things that were going on. Now, the beginning of the process is that the sunflower seeds are planted shallow in the earth. And then months later, they blossom and grow and you have fields. I'm talking about and our family had thousands of hectares of sunflower fields. During that time period, when the flowers are blossoming is the time when the bees come out. Now, pause and let me say this. If you're allergic to bees, do not under any circumstances go to a sunflower field because you will get stung. Nonetheless, the flowers grow and then they get to the point to where they start to die and dry out. And then each sunflower seed, sometimes hundreds per plant, is ready to be harvested. And those seeds are harvested and turned into sunflower oil. Now, if you don't know, sunflower oil is the second most used cooking oil in the world. Now, the majority of sunflower oil comes from Russia and the Ukraine. However, down here in Argentina, we do quite a bit of production ourselves. Now let's hit rewind and go back and I'll share some things with you. The very first time my brother and I had any clue that these creatures that you call dog man existed was during the planting season. The two of us were out there working the seeding machine. If you don't know what a seeding machine is, imagine a giant tractor on the front. You feed the seed into these grates and then you drive along and it plows the soil and sees the soil all at one time. My brother is up front loading the seeds. I'm behind the wheel. When I see something about 150 yards away, running full speed across the field. Now to me, it looked like a giant black dog. And when I say giant, I mean the size of a bull running across the field. But understand, this is flat land, very few trees anywhere. So we're able to stand there and watch this gigantic dog run across open fields all the way out into the distance. The two of us look at each other, shake our heads and get back to work. That was the very first time. Now, that was the very first time we saw one of these creatures. The second time we had an encounter with this thing, we were both in a truck with my father. God rest his soul. He's passed on now. It's nighttime. We're traveling home from my uncle's house who lived about 20 miles away. We're driving up the road and you see a giant black wolf standing on the side of the roadway. This time, we got a clear glimpse at it. Nine feet tall, black, muscular wolf standing on two legs. Now, the weirdest thing about this encounter was, I think the headlights startled it because it just stood there and stared at us as we rolled by. Imagine a scene that's on the passenger side of the road. My brother's in the front seat, I'm in the back seat. Both of us are on the passenger side. The two of us are freaking out as we see this thing. And my dad is just driving along like he doesn't see anything. Once we pass it up, we're a couple of miles away from home. I'm asking my dad, I'm saying, listen, did you not see this thing? His only reply is, yes, son, I saw it, but there's nothing I can do about it. Those things have been around here for a very long time. Don't bother it and it won't bother you. We go home, go inside, didn't have a problem with it at all. Fast forward, my brother gets his girlfriend pregnant. They decide they're going to get married. Now it's me, my mother, my father, my brother, and his pregnant wife all living in a house together. It's 3.30 a.m. when I hear his wife screaming at the top of her lungs. I come down the steps into the living room, looking around. The front door is open, and I hear her outside screaming. When I go outside, she's down on the ground with her back against the front side of the house, holding her belly understand it's pitch black out there the only light is the light from the front porch and she is in and she is in tears my brother and father come outside and we're trying to figure out what's going on with her because she's absolutely hysterical we get her up on her feet get her back into the house sit her on the sofa she starts to explain to us that she was feeling nauseous so she went outside for some fresh air sat down in a rocking chair on the porch and was rocking back and forth singing to the baby 
when she heard something rustling to her left on the side of the house. At first, she ignores the sound, but then she hears it again and turns and looks in that direction and sees these giant yellow eyes staring at her. Now, the way she described the size of these eyes, she took her fist and she balled them up and she held both of her fists up into the air and said, this is what the size of these eyeballs were like. So now my brother is spazzing out, losing his mind. He grabs a shotgun, goes outside into the darkness, looking for whatever it was. We spend hours that night circling the house and circling the property, looking for something. Didn't find anything. The next morning we come back and the only thing we find are these two gigantic canine footprints. So now the entire family is up in arms. My mother's afraid. My brother's wife is afraid. My dad is on edge. My brother has lost his damn mind. And to make the situation worse, it's harvesting time. We spent hours. I'm talking about 12 hours a day working out in the fields, which would mean that we would leave my mother and his wife at home alone. Now, for the first three days of harvesting, everything went smooth. Didn't have a problem whatsoever. But it was on the fourth day of harvesting that all hell broke loose. Understand, we're up at 4 a.m. having breakfast. Work started as soon as the sun came up. Well, the sun comes up and we start to head towards one of our back fields. We're riding along the roadway. And this thing waits till we get all the way to the back field. That's where my father spots this thing. Rise up and make a beeline straight for the house. Pause right here and let me say this to you. Naturally, maybe saying to yourself, how do you know that this was dog man that was running towards the house? In your mind, and in your mind, you may be saying it's daybreak. There's not a whole bunch of light. And you're right. But when you're used to working, as soon as the sun comes up, your eyes become adjusted to seeing everything. So we knew, combine the fact that this thing was standing up, running on two legs, and it was sprinting towards the house like an Olympic track runner, trust and believe, we knew what we were seeing. So now we're all in a panic, hop in the pickup truck, and instead of taking a road back out, we cut straight across the fields, making a beeline for the house. Now, I don't know if, now I'm not sure if you've ever been on farmland, but there's a reason why you cut roads through farmland. Because when you ride across that soil, it's a bumpy ride. We're flying 85 miles an hour across those fields. Trying to intersect this thing as it's headed towards the house and it is out running us. And this right here, in this moment that things really became terrifying. Because as we're coming on an angle to the house, it's going around the side of the house to the front. When I tell you, we damn near ran into the side of our house, trying to come to a stop, jump out. My brother and my father circle around the front side of the house, headed towards the front door. I go around the back side of the house, going into the back door. And we all meet. Now, listen to me. This is when it gets crazy. We all meet in the living room and there's no sign of this thing whatsoever. So now we're standing there. My mother's freaking out. My sister-in-law is hyperventilating. And that's when we hear movement on top of our roof, heavy movement. The wood was creaking and cracking. And again, understand, this is daybreak. The sun is coming up. So now the three of us go out of the front door armed, looking at the roof. And this thing is squatted down on our roof. The wood on the roof is warping and bending, and it's just staring at us. Listen, I'm going to stop right here and let me explain this to you. To this day, I have no clue what it wanted or why it came there. But when I tell you we lit that thing up, we shot it multiple times. Now, the first two bullets that hit it, it didn't even bother to react to them. It was my brother shot at his head and hit its ear, blowing a portion of its ear off that it turned ran up our roof jumped up into the air it looked like something from a freaking horror movie and so now we're scrambling around the back side of the house to get more shots in on it and by the time we get to the side of the house this thing is 80 yards away 
And my brother and my father were not letting this go. So now we're back in our pickup truck trying to chase this thing down. And when I tell you they are fast, they are fast. And it is cutting across field after field after field after field. And we are driving across people's fields chasing this thing down. And we finally catch up with this thing at the Rio Delgado River. Now, I don't know if it had reached the maximum distance that it could run. I don't know if it had overheated. I can't explain to you why this thing stopped. But as we got closer to that spot on the river, it was laying down on the ground panting. And my father rammed into it with the truck. My father ran into it with the truck going about 60 miles an hour. I'm not sure if you've ever been driving down the road and ran into a deer or maybe hit a bear or hit an elk. But when you slam into something that big going that fast, it truly is an accident. Tore the completely tore the front of that truck up. We hop out and start shooting. It gets up and starts to move towards the river as we shoot and hit it. The next thing I know, it's jumping into the river. It goes underwater and it never comes up. We stayed there for two hours, working our way up and down that river, looking for this thing and not a sign of it. And let me say this to you. I've had the pleasure of listening to a lot of Dogman Encounters and I've heard people say that these things are invincible. And maybe there is a version of them that's invincible, but this one wasn't invincible. It wasn't invincible at all. In fact, I think we killed it. I don't have the body, but I can tell you one thing. It ain't never been back to our property again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? The one and only James Williams, Dog Waters, and I'm back. And I'm going to give you a little bit inside baseball on this story before, and I'll tell you why I want to give you inside baseball. This is an outlier story for me, and I vetted it. It's true. Um, I talked to this gentleman's wife. Uh, I talked to the two brothers. And the reason why this is an outlier story for me is because it doesn't truly fit um, each and every characteristic of where these encounters happen. So this area in Argentina is primarily farmland, but it's not corn that's grown there. And I think it may be interesting. I'm, I'm looking for more encounters in that area to add to the data set because in my mind, it may not just be that it needs to be corn fields. It may just need to be any crop being grown. So now there's definitely a waterway, a river within, I want to say, 50 miles of the area. Um... And that's where they ended up confronting it and shooting it. And they believe they killed it because it went under the water and it never resurfaced. However, I'm not so sure about that. But I got to take them at their word because I wasn't there. Now, what I want to try and figure out is where it could have come from. Um, and please look it up on the, on a the map. It's uh, Punta, P-U-N-T-A del... Um, Agua, A-G-U-A, and um, Argentina. When you look it up on Google Maps, at first it's going to bring you to a restaurant. Um, it's a certain providence in Argentina. Matter of fact, I'm just going to put the... I'll put the coordinates to the area there. I'm not going to put the coordinates to the house. Um, but they're not hard to find because there's only so many houses there. It's a bunch of farmland. But... As a researcher, this one intrigues me because it's outside of the normal, the data sets of what I've been hearing, seeing, and collecting. The behavior pattern is pretty much normal. They like to intimidate people. I don't know what it was about um, his wife been being pregnant. I think it was directly correlated to the pregnancy. And I haven't had many encounters where women who've been pregnant had dog man encounters. So... This is another outlier for this story. And it's one of those things that I find to be kind of confusing to me. Um, and I would like to get you guys' opinion on it. Why do you think that um, it would be attracted to a pregnant woman? I, I don't know. I mean, I know there's reasons why they're attracted to a woman who's in who's menstruating. Um, that's a common, common, common occurrence with Dogman and Bigfoot. But 
with her being pregnant, I, I, I just don't have enough data and enough information on it. And so also, if any of you had an encounter with any kind of cryptid while you were pregnant, I would love to hear the story so I can um, collect more data on those type of encounters. If any of you women had encounters with dogmen while you were pregnant. I think you got to be a little specific nowadays. Nonetheless, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, entertaining. But it's it's a point of confusion for me. And I'm at the point now where um, these type of things are a little bit more interesting to me than your typical sighting. Because it's more of a puzzle for me to try and figure out what's going on. You know, why is this happening in this location um, to this family? So, the two things I want to know is, what do you think? Look at the area. And the second thing is, you know, have any of you ladies out there had encounters with cryptids while you were pregnant? Um, for me to have a valid data set, I feel like I need 10 to 15 encounters on it. Um, and I don't have to make 10 to 15 public, but I need at least 10 to 15. So if you had an encounter with something like this while you were pregnant, please reach out to me. And hopefully everything worked out for you. It didn't go crazy or wasn't nothing insane or absolutely terrifying. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only James Williams, Dark Waters. And I'm is out. Peace.